So the um, end of the year, this is the 30th, I believe, and uh, we reflect on the on time itself because it's uh, <clears throat> I found you know a lot of insight came through through uh, contemplating time and uh, you know how you know so we're committed to time as our reality you know the age of our body or the clock or the calendar or the diary and you know the whole the, everywhere the society is very much uh, committed to to living in, in time as the real world so so then in Richard in uh, Reflections on Dhamma Santidiko Akaliko Akalika Dhamma then I would um, you know contemplate that what the timeless you know um, what is a Kalika Dhamma and uh, you know just this kind of self-inquiry style in um, what you know trying to to uh, put this concept of akaliko or timelessness in and then reflect on it because because all the thinking is time bound you all you know you can't conceive timelessness you, you can you have you negate the time itself you say timeless so um, so then you you know you're exploring uh, the nature of phenomena which is all about time you know birth and death and arising ceasing and, and uh, this way you 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 know you can contemplate that uh, that um, right now there's only experience reality is always in the present. You know, there's no, you know, you can plan for the future, but actually, there's only the present moment is is what's real, and the rest is, uh, you know, a, a creation of the mind. Like right now, sitting here, you're, you know, this is this is the present moment, the Pachubana Dhamma, or the reality of now, and then of course. You know, our lives are committed to the future, like tomorrow and New Year's, going into the Warin and planning uh, for the the, the uh, memorial service at Wat Pong and so forth. So this is the future. We have we have this in the future, but then right now, you know, what is it? The the reality of planning. Uh, for the future, what is it in the present? And so, it, it, you know, it's the thinking, uh, ideas we create in the present, uh, expectations, uh, or fears, dread, or hopes about the future. Uh, it, we, you know, arise in the present. So I think on, you know, on the 16th of January, is this, uh, you know annual ceremony memorial celebration of Lung Cha and the 16th of January is when he he uh, died and then they had a, his uh, funeral his cremation on 16th of January the following year <clears throat> so we've got this this thing in our mind 16th of January right now 16 January 2011 is we expect that you know it's not a memory it's the future and so you just begin to notice that that's a perception we create you know a, a, a convention that we use in the present but how many of you really live your lives for the future you know where you're going to go next or what you know the thinking that that if we practice now we should get some desired result in the future is a creation in the present 
So this you can know, this is like direct knowing. It's, uh, it's, it's not a dismissal or a judgment, it's not saying it's wrong to plan for the future or, uh, you know, it's just noting what it is as, a, as the reality as we do it and the present is like this. So then the future is, <clears throat> you know, putting it, summing it up is unknown. It's the mayna in Lumpur teaching, uncertain. It's not known. It's not a memory, but we create expectations or hopes or dreads, fears, plans. So, so many people's lives are lived always, you know, expecting something in the future. The present moment can be not noticed at all because maybe we're busy planning uh, our life out for the future. Or, you know, and then you're sitting here and then the past, yesterday, what is that right now? As you're sitting here, this is the present moment, like this, and then yesterday is a memory. So I remember things that happened yesterday. That I remember that. That's memory because it's already happened, and then the retentive memory will will remember, you know, like things, uh, details of that one experience. Uh, things that happened yesterday. And <clears throat> so just by noting, and then you have memories, you know, these five khandhas. So you have all these uh, five khandhas are impermanent, uh, changing, uh, unsatisfactory, and not so. So if, if as you begin to really use that and, and use it for penetrating you know on both on the coarse and subtle levels uh, you know more and more your your commitment to <coughs> time as reality and to yourself as a personality these things become increasingly uh, less real for us begin to to uh, you know we begin to acknowledge what they really are we're not dismissing or denying but recognizing and this this takes a you know like a determination to keep at it so that you you know you know you you're really learning you're you're all the time and whatever's happening you know whether you're, you're healthy or sickly or things are going well or going all wrong or whether you're feeling faith and hope and, and interest or you're bored and fed up, uh, everything is, is here to be seen for what it is, you know, so, so the moods, the emotions, the feelings change, but that which is aware of impermanence change, uh, and that, is, what is that? You know, so then you investigate, can, <coughs> can uh, uh, condition know another condition? And so you, you, these are like, this is what you call sort of self-inquiry, where you, you know, you're not interested in getting, uh, you know, nice little answers out of a book or from somebody else, but the way of looking, of kind of observing and breaking through a lot of assumptions. Uh, that one holds as, as being real and being true. So what is it that is aware of conditioned phenomena? You know, is it me, Ajahn Sumedho, being aware of conditioned phenomena? Or what is Ajahn Sumedho? And that, of course, then is a, is a name and, uh, and that is you know, a conventional reality, you know, we use it as a convention, but one begins to see it as a condition. That which is aware of the name, like when when I just contemplate the my, this name, Ajahn Sumedho, that which is aware of the name Ajahn Sumedho doesn't have a name. <laughs> so, and Ajahn Sumedho is convention. 
You know, so you have what they call conventional reality, samut, samuti satcha and paramatta satcha. So then you, that which is aware of the name, aware of the body, aware of, of uh, assumptions, prejudices, biases, feelings and uh, attitudes, the thinking process, is not any of that. It's uh, this, uh, uh, you know, this ability as a human to be aware of conditioned phenomena without becoming conditioned phenomena. And so that's what we call mindfulness, sati and sampachanya. And then panya, with uh, discernment. Now really, you know, taking that to its logical conclusion, <clears throat> then you have real insight into this, into Dhamma. You, you, you know, it's a scene, it's known, it's not through perception anymore, or words, or uh, definitions, but through the reality. And so then the, the teaching itself, uh, you know, I, is a convention. But it's, it's not a convention for grasping, it's a convention to encourage and keep directing our attention. So like, uh, in monastic life, you know, the monastic code and monastic life, you know, you really see it as, use it as a way of, you know, uh, remembering it. Because it's so easy to get caught up into the problems of a monastery or personal problems with 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 each other or family problems or doubts and fears and that 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 you know human beings produce endlessly and we and just because we're bhikkhus doesn't mean we don't do that we do it all the time but but you know like training yourself to see the like the robe itself like I say how to use this robe to be mindful you know so just the fact that it's a, it's a kind of this color and uh, the color itself and the, the kind of style of it, you know, is a way of, of you know, remind, when you're getting caught up with maybe personal problems or <clears throat> fears and whatnot, then, then you, you, you know, just by observing the robe as helps to remind you to but you ban and tamma here and now to start observing just your own maybe anxiety in the present or or whatever you're feeling uh, is you're beginning to use this form as a as in a skillful way to as a reminder not as a uh, another kind of uh, attachment or uh, a self identity. So that, you know, the, how to use this tradition for awareness, you know. It's up, you know, each one of us has to, you know, develop our, we all have our own Vipaka coming to live with. So, so what I'm saying, I'm not, you know, I'm not expecting you to do, do what I've done, but it, it's more like an example of how to how to, you know, use the way you are, the kind of character tendencies and both the virtues and the vices and whatnot as a way of awareness. And how to use this convention that we all, you know, have, have taken on so that it, it, it uh, is encouraging, you know, it's, a, it's using it skillfully for awareness rather than for uh, just... Uh, you know, just become another habit or another identity. So also, you know, in the monastic life, it's based on, you know, it's a structured existence. So you have the senior, uh, the junior, and the new monks, and the novices, and all these. These are, you know, kind of part of a structure uh, that is the nature of phenomena. You know, it has 
uh, all phenomena is, is hierarchical. It's some are higher, lower, be older and younger and taller and shorter and things like this. So then, uh, the, out of ignorance, we had to identify with uh, maybe our heights, with our age, with our seniority or juniority or whatever. And then, then, then we're just caught in the worldly habit, uh, attachment to conditional phenomena. The, in his life, you know, keep, it's a constant kind of informing oneself, like Lung Po Chao is always saying, informing your consciousness with wisdom. It's like, like our, you know, we're conscious beings, but uh, through uh, avicca or ignorance, we, we've, uh, we're, you know, we can have all kinds of strange ideas and prejudices and fears and desires. <clears throat> that we believe in and, and commit ourselves to like uh, concepts of time and cultural identities and so forth but in uh, you know seeing that this is uh, this is conventional reality and and then our refuge is not in convention but in in this awareness so this this uh, three refuges Buddha Dhamma Sangha is is another skillful uh, way of reminding yourself. So, you know, actually there's nothing to fear as you begin to, to you know, recognize even your, even fear, even your tendency to be frightened or, or you know, if there's, you know, be caught up in dread or fear about the future or yourself or doubts about yourself, worries about yourself. These these are conditions that that arise and cease in the present, and your relationship to them is one of knowing them, not judging them. It's not about you know commenting or criticizing, but recognizing. So, like just knowing, and then using like the Buddha's teaching uh, uh, for noble truths, especially that's the that's the the main one is. Uh, is something to use to remind, not something to just grasp as an end in itself. So then, you know, like a, a completely crazy, psychotic person is still conscious, but informed that the, the you know it's the, that person is caught up in in uh, just overwhelmed by delusion. And then the awakened individual is, can have, you can have crazy, uh, irrational states of mind, but you're aware of them. So it's not like, you know, we always have reasonable Dhamma type thoughts or feelings or emotions, but you, you know, we, as our uh, Vipaka Kamma matures, you know, we have to go through various uh, strong fears or maybe obsessions and and whatnot that we begin to see you know as in terms of this is all conditions are impermanent rather than some kind of personal defect or you know making it into some kind of doubt and and worry and anxiety and identity with yourself so you know this is where you begin to realize that fearlessness is as long as you're, as long as there's that, that uh, ignorance motivating us, then there's a lot to fear, you know, because the conditions change and we how much control do we have over the environment and our, even our own minds and bodies. But so on that level, <clears throat> fear is a is a kind of uh, existential reality in this realm. This is a fear realm. Fearlessness then is. Is, is not in destroying or denying, but in awakening. Because uh, you realize that even fear itself is an object in consciousness. You know, you begin to be the knower of the fear rather than the, 
frightened person, and you you know you you see for yourself, you have a choice: are you going to be this frightened person or be the knower of fear? And then, more as you keep asking this question, then you begin. Of course, it's not really a choice. <laughs> <laughs> just let go of fear, you know, not, you're not, you're not uh, annihilating it, but you're, you're no longer deluded, and, uh, uh, caught up and uh, hypnotized by fearful conditions. So, that's all for this morning.